Hello guys, welcome to algorithms made easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question make number of distinct characters equal. In this question we are given two zero index strings word 1 and word 2 and we need to return true if it is possible to get the number of distinct characters in word 1 and word 2 to be equal with exactly one move. Otherwise we need to return false. Now what is a move? Here it is defined that a move consists of choosing two indices i and j from word 1 and word 2 and swapping the character present at that indexes from each other. Now there are certain examples given with the problem. We will discuss those in the video and let's take a look on the constraints given with the problem. The important constraint over here is the both the words will contain only English lowercase letters. Now let's first understand what the problem is all about and also take up some extra examples so that we understand what are the different scenarios that we need to take care of. So here are the certain examples that we will be discussing in this particular video. We will start off with the first example. In this example we are given two words. The first word is A and C and the second word is only the letter B. Now for better visualization let's show the words in the form of an array. And the second part that we do over here is finding out the number of distinct character in both the words. In the first word the number of distinct character is 2 and in the second word the number of distinct character is 1. Now the part where we need to make the move. A move consists of finding out two in indices i and j from both the words and then swapping the two characters present at those indices respectively. So suppose we take the first indices and we try to swap them. When we swap them and then we find out that the number of distinct character in both the words is still the same. Which means even after swapping these two characters there is no possibility of getting the number of distinct character in the two words to be equal. So we choose another index. We choose index 1 from the first word and index 0 from the second word. We again swap them but still the number of distinct characters are unequal. As we have exhausted all our possibilities, we find out that it is not possible to make the number of distinct character in these two words to be equal by making exactly one move. Now remember that in the problem it is clearly stated that we need to make exactly one move. That means no matter if the number of distinct characters are equal at the very start of the word, we still need to make one move and then check if the number of distinct characters are equal or not. We also have that kind of example in this problem and it will make much more sense when we will get to that example. Moving on to the second example, we again show the words in an array format. Calculate the number of distinct characters between the two words. We see there are three distinct characters in the word one and two distinct characters in word 2. We check if we can swap the zero index of the two words and get any different result. As the character is equal, it doesn't make any sense to swap. So we move to the first index and we swap. Remember we are here only taking any random selection of i and j. So you can also choose index 0 from first word and index 1 from the second word to do the swapping. But for simplicity purpose, we are going one by one with the same indexes. Now when we do the swap, the words have the same number of distinct characters. Since we are able to find out that after one swap, we can make the number of distinct character equal between the two words, we are sure that it provides a correct result. So we'll return true. Now to the third problem. Now this is the example that we were talking about. Herein we see that the number of distinct character between the two words is initially equal. But we cannot directly return true in this particular case because the question clearly states that we need to make exactly one move. That means we need to find out two indices and swap them and then see whether the number of distinct characters are equal or not. We check any random value, we swap them and still the number of distinct character between the two words are equal. So we will return true. Moving on to the next example. Here also the number of distinct characters are equal and now we try to make a swap because it is compulsory to do exactly one swap. So we make a swap 
and after making the swap the number of distinct characters become unequal and this is the one case that we were talking about that initially both the words had the same number of distinct characters but after the swap the number of distinct characters between the two words are unequal and so there is no possibility of making the number of distinct character equal so we will return false now to the next example it is similar to the previous example we just added a character in word 1 the number of distinct character between the two words are equal we find out the randomly any two indexes we try to swap the zero index of the two words we make the swap and now the number of distinct character between the two words are equal so we will return true there are certain questions that came to my mind when i was solving this particular problem and we will go through them one by one so the first question that came to my mind was how to find the number of distinct characters in a word now that is a very important part in this problem so in order to find the number of distinct characters suppose we have a word given with us we'll take an array of length 26 now why 26 because we are sure that the characters present in the word are only small case english letters that means there will be at most 26 distinct characters in a word so here the index 0 will correspond to character a and index 25 will correspond to character z now how do we find the number of distinct characters we put the value in this particular cell this cell will be nothing but the number of each character that are present in the word or the occurrence of each character in the word then we need to loop through this array of length 26 we'll count the number of those indexes where the value is greater than 0 and that will become the number of distinct character present in this particular word since the length of this array is constant for any length of word it will be a constant time and that is also important now moving on to the second question that came to my mind in two words how many combination of character swaps are possible we know a few things the first is the characters are only small case letters so there can be only 26 unique characters in each word that means there can be at most 26 by 26 possibilities and since the number of possibilities are finite or we can say constant it will take a constant time to go through all these possibilities and that is an important part in this problem between the two words if we find out all the possibilities and go through all these 26 by 26 possibilities and find out the one possibility wherein we are getting the number of distinct character between the two words as equal we can return true otherwise the result will be false now as always i'll recommend you to solve this problem by your own using the various understanding that we got till now if you face any issue you can always come back to the video to see what different thing that we have done over here now it's time for us to code this particular approach so we need to first create the occurrence array for both the words now what is an occurrence array it will be an array of size 26 with each index holding the occurrence of each character that is present in the word so we will write down a method for that Now that we have defined the method, we will use that method to find the two occurrence arrays. So it will be occurrence 1 for word 1 and occurrence 2 for word 2. Now that we got the occurrence of the two arrays, what we need to do? We need to go through all the 26 by 26 possibilities and find out if there lies one swap wherein the number of distinct character between the two words are equal so in order to go through all the possibilities what is the way the only way is doing two for loops now the simplest question whether you can swap from an index which doesn't have any value that means whether you can swap a character which is not even present in the word one or word two the simple answer is no we cannot do that so we need to put those condition in place 
if the occurrence one of i is greater than zero then only we will be going through this for loop we are taking into consideration ith index for word one and jth index for word two similarly we'll put the condition for occurrence two array if it is greater than zero then only we will be doing this operations now what we need to do we need to swap the index i and index j values now what does a swapping means swapping means that the value at ith index from occurrence one array should be decremented and in the occurrence two array at ith index the value should be incremented so let's say we define a function which swap the values in occurrence one array and occurrence two array with us providing the indexes now if we are swapping the value and we can only make exactly one swap we need to revert back to the old position now how can we revert back we can swap again now this time we just reverse the indexes so this swap will make the move and this will revert back to the old position so let's first define this swap function so as ith index belongs to occurrence one array so from occurrence one array ith index will be decremented and in occurrence two array the ith index will be incremented for jth index in occurrence one array will be incremented and from occurrence two array it will be decremented so that is the swap that we are doing we are just incrementing the occurrence of character at ith and jth index and decrementing from the other array respectively so now what we need to do we need to check if the number of distinct character between the two arrays are equal or not so we'll write down a function for that as well we'll check are distinct equal in two arrays where occurrence one and occurrence two this function will return a boolean value so if it is true we can directly return true from here now let's define this function so let's take the number of distinct value in a variable called count now we need to iterate over this array we know that the length of the array will be only 26 we check if any value is present in occurrence one array this means that there is a character present so we'll increment the count and in the same loop itself what we can do is we'll check if the same index has value if it is we can decrement the count and at the end what we need to return is whether the count value is still zero or not if it is zero that means the number of distinct characters in both the arrays are equal now all this is done at the end if we haven't found any value or any answer that means there is no possibility wherein we are getting the number of distinct character to be equal now the coding is done let's try to run this code and see if it compiles successfully so it got submitted successfully now let's talk about the time and space complexity the time complexity as we can see we are going in this occurrence array till the length of the word that means the time complexity will be maximum of the length of the two words there will be no effect on the time complexity due to this operation wherein we are going from 26 to 26 because it is of constant time so if we take the length of the word 1 as m and length of word 2 as n time complexity will be max of m and n now let's talk about space complexity space complexity in this case will be o of 1 as we are using a constant array to store the result and using nothing which depends on length of either of the two words so the space complexity is o of 1 that's all for today's video i hope you liked this video and learned a thing or two from this video do let us know your thoughts in the comments below and if you have any question or query you can post that into the comment section and we will try to solve them as quickly as possible or if you want us to make a video on certain specific problem you can post that too and we will try to make that as well i hope you like this video thanks for watching this video see you in the next one